Hello everyone, this is Professor Wilson Kamami and my YouTube channel is also called Professor Wilson Kamami. So make sure you continue subscribing, commenting for more classes on the same. So today we are going to look at how do we solve um, what we call implicit differentiation. So in this case, what are implicit differentiation? This is where a situation where you find that you are differentiating both parts of the equation, both right hand and left side of the equation. So in this case now, we will go straight to the point on examples on how we solve the implicit function. So in this case, assume you have So that kind of an equation. We are required to get the derivative amma change in y with respect to x. How do we solve this one? In this case, you find that you get the derivative of each and every part of the equation, both right hand and left hand side. So in this case, we get derivative of this one. So we get 3y squared. But because we are getting change in y over change in x, it will be change in y over change in x. Plus, how do we get this one? We will get 3x squared is equals to 0. I hope that one is clear. Whatever we have y, we must add change in y over change in x. So we differentiate the way it is. We bring y, 3 there, then y to power 3 minus 1, we will get 2. So, but we must add change in y over change in x. When it comes to x cubed, you bring 3 there, then x squared is equals to when you differentiate constant, we said when you differentiate constant, you will get 0. So in that case, this is our equation, but we are required to get change in y over change in x. So we make this one now the subject. So 3y squared change in y over change in x will be equals to minus 3x squared. So change in y over change in x will be equals to minus 3x squared all over 3y squared. Because I have divided both sides with 3y squared, so that this side I have 1. So in that case, dy over dx will be equals to x squared all over y squared. And that's how we solve implicit differentiation. So let's take example 2 for more clarification. In my example 2, I want to solve the same same equation, but this time I use 6xy. I want to solve the same same example, but this time 6xy. So how do we solve this one? Again, we said whenever we have y, we solve like we are differentiating with 3. You have now, you bring 3 there, then y to power 2. Whenever you have y, we said it, you have change in y over change in x. Plus, this one, you, have, you bring 3 there, then you have x to power 2 because you less 1 is equals to, here we have not put change in y over change in x because we only have the function of x only. So in this case, it is a function of a y cubed, so we need to add change in y over change in x there. Then here, here we are using what we call chain rule, product rule, sorry. So we hold, we differentiate y. Plus now, we hold y constant, we differentiate x. Okay? So in the other, maybe there are some people who are, we hold x, y constant, we differentiate 6 of which I know when you differentiate 6 here, you get 0. So that's why we ignore that one, because 6 is constant. So we differentiate here using product rule. We hold x constant, differentiate y, so we get 6x. When you differentiate y, you get 1. But because we are differentiating y, we add change in y over change in x plus 6y. When you differentiate x, you get 1. Here, you don't add change in y over change in x plus 0, because they have found 0. So in this case, we have 3y squared, change in y over change in x, plus 3x squared is equals to 6x, change in y over change in x, plus 6y. So again, remember, we want to solve change in y over change in x, so you must make this one the subject. So you bring this one the other side, and this function, you take it the other side. So you have 3y squared, change in y over change in x, minus 6x, change in y over change in x, is equal to 6y minus 3x squared. Because when you take this one, it will be negative. When you take this one, we will change the sign. So in this case, change in y over dx is common. So we have 3y squared minus 6x is equal to 6y minus 3x squared. So you divide both sides with 3y squared minus 6x over 3y squared minus 6x. So my change in y over change in x, I'll be able to show that it is 6y minus 3x squared all over 
3y squared minus 6x. So from there you can simplify further because I know you can bring, you can factor out 3. Maybe you can factor out 3, you have 2y minus x squared all over 3, you have y squared minus 2x. So in this case, this 3 and 3 will cancel out. So let's take example 3. But in this case, we can be able to show that we are able to show that when you are given implicit function, in what we call implicit differentiation now, you differentiate on both sides. Wherever you are differentiating where you if you want to get change in y over change in x, but wherever you are differentiating with y, you must add change in y over change in x. Whenever you are differentiating where there is y now here, you must add change in y over change in x. Then you solve that one by making change in y over change in x in the sum check. Let's take example three. In our example three, you realize that now I have sin x plus y is equal to y squared cos x. How do we differentiate this one? You find that now we want to differentiate with respect to x. So I'm differentiating both sides with respect to x. So I have sin x plus y. Then I'm differentiating with respect to x, y squared cos x. How do we differentiate this one? We said we will differentiate now sin x. How do you differentiate sin x, sin 2x? We said if you have to differentiate this one, you get cos 2x, then you differentiate here inside 2x. So the same case you apply here. So I will differentiate, the, when you differentiate sin, you get cos now the whole of that one. But now you must differentiate inside, here inside, x plus y. Uh -huh is equals to now here we have what you call the product rule first of all you hold y squared constant you differentiate cos x plus now you hold cos x constant you differentiate y squared so here you get y squared when you differentiate cos x we said you get negative sin x plus cos x when you differentiate y, you get 2y. y squared, you get 2y. But because we have differentiated y, we must add change in y over change in x. So in this side, we have negative y squared sin x plus 2y cos x change in y over change in x. That is on my right hand side. Now, on my left hand side now, I have cos x plus y. When now I differentiate x plus y, now, I will differentiate x with respect to x, I will get 1, plus, now this one will be 1, but it will be 1, but because I have differentiated y, it will be change in y over change in x. So if I am to open the bracket, now I have cos x plus y, plus change in y over change in x, cos x plus y. I have opened the brackets, I multiply with 1, I will get 1. I multiply with the change in y, I have that one. Now remember we are solving change in y over change in x. So I must make change in y over x the, 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 the subject. So I'll bring this one the other side and this one the other side. So I'll have cos x plus y. Now when this one comes this side it becomes plus y squared sin x because it will change sign from negative to positive is equals to 2y cos x change in y over change in x but this one, when it comes to the other side, now it becomes minus cos x plus y. Remember, we want to make this one the subject. So you have dy over change in x. It will be equals to 2y cos x minus cos x plus y. So this is cos x plus y plus y squared sin x on the other side. So we make this one the subject dy over dx. It means when we are making this subject, we divide both sides with this one. So we have cos x plus y plus y squared sin x all over 2y cos x minus cos x plus y. That's how we solve that one. Because we have divided both sides with this one, and both sides with this one. So I'll have dy over dx on that side is equal to this one over this one. So that's how we solve the implicit differentiation. I know it's not hard, but it is good to realize whenever you are differentiating, if you want to get change in y over change in x, 
So whenever you have y, you must add what we call change in y. When I'm differentiating y, I must add change in y over change in x. I know differentiating one y, I'll get one, but I must add change in y over change in x. Whenever I'm differentiating y squared, I'll get two, then y to power one, so I'll get two y, but I must add change in y over change in x, so that I make change in y over change in x now the subject, and in the, at the end of the day, I'll have been able to solve the implicit differentiation. So that's how we solve implicit differentiation. For more examples, we agreed you, ma you, you can reach me with one of my channel so that I'll be able to solve and respond to you as soon as possible. So in that case, continue subscribing, sharing to your student so that in the next class, we, we are almost done, not done as that, but we are almost progressing well with the calculus one when it comes to differentiation, where now next time we shall look at how do we differentiate logarithm function. So how do we solve logarithm function? We have done with the implicit function. We are done with the trigonometry, the inverse of the trigonometry. We have looked at natural exponential, polynomials. So at least at the end of the day we are moving well before we look at the, the application of differentiation later. So continue subscribing and continue sharing. Thank you.